my name is Tony Bonbank, and we're going to talk about digital formative assessment uh, tools mostly today. And I'm going to go through this slideshow fairly briefly as a warm up. So as we get going, uh, I like you to think a little bit about who is your greatest teacher. Most people will come up with uh, a person that uh, they had in high school or maybe their fourth grade teacher. Uh, some people will think about their parents. But if you think about it, your greatest teacher was yourself. And part of the reason for that is that when we learn, we're often thinking about um, how did that go? How did that not go? Uh, and we tend to be our own best teachers because we are constantly self-evaluating uh, in our own mind as we go by trial and error. And that's how we gain life experience. So the next question is, what do these three things have in common? We've got cats in the cradle and uno and a skateboard these three have kind of a unique connection that a lot of people don't pick up on right away but a lot of people do associate it with their childhood and that's definitely on the right track um, what these three things have in common is most people learn these from other children and if you think about your experience of learning any one of these chances are you learned it in some part uh, from another child if you think about what that experience might have been like, especially I think of the skateboard as the greatest example of this. As some people learned how to ride a skateboard, they learned it from watching somebody else or by their own personal trial and error, or in a lot of time, in a lot of cases, probably a combination of both. So thinking about that and thinking about this idea of formative assessment, what does that really mean when we really get going with things? Most people didn't learn to ride a skateboard by doing a worksheet or reading anything out of a book or even watching a video, although that's increasingly possible now in the age of YouTube. Most people learned it by actual experiential learning and sometimes with the guidance of coach who could have been uh, another four-year-old for all we know. Who might have said okay but you need to have your back foot back a little bit further or you fell off because this and if you think about what that ex learning experience really is it's very low pressure and it very much values uh, the most important parts of the learning which is the experience itself so real formative learning the best part um, the key ingredients are that it has an interesting challenge of some kind, quality feedback from others, self-evident assessment, we're going to talk about that a little bit more, and natural reflection, that is the, uh, the natural sense that people have of thinking about how things went. So all these kind of fit into why do kids like video games, and one of the main reasons uh, that kids like video games is because they are essentially low pressure even though they may be very very uh, intense as a challenge the kids do not see a long term uh, any any kind of long term pressure on playing a video game they play it and they win or they play it and they lose and life goes on and that makes it a really nice space for kids to escape into this world but also it's a really nice space for learning so a lot of the tools that I show you today do have kind of a gaming component to it but the reason why people like uh, things like sports and games is because it really is a self-evident assessment it, the truest form of formative assessment people get to see where they are and then at the end there is data to show whether or not their sense of how they're doing was accurate. So if you think about learning how to hit a ball, uh, baseball or softball, you think about the early stages of that. There may have been a coach, but you take a swing and you hit it and you don't need a coach to say, yep, you hit the ball. Nice job. You maybe need a coach to say, okay, put your hands up a little bit to give guidance, but the actual success is self-evident. And so wherever we can, we want to build as many learning experiences where that success is self-evident and it can be based in trial and error and experiential, exper uh, experiential learning that the risk can be zero. And that's where we 
kind of mess things up a lot of times when we try to put everything in the grade book and send it home to mom and dad, which those things are important at certain stages, but at the time of learning when we need uh, students to have bravery, then that's the time where we want to let them know that they can take as many stabs at something as they really need to, and they can learn as they go. And we want to we want to structure some things so that there's a safe environment for that. And wherever we can, we want to make that competition against self more so than against others, even though friendly competition might be nice. So we're going to talk today about digital formative assessment. These are different kinds of tools, and there's a, a wide, wide world of them, but we're just going to talk about a couple in a little narrow skew today uh, that are fun, engaging. They oftentimes are very self-evident. I'm either doing well or I'm not, or I got that one wrong or I didn't. And most of them produce some kind of data, not just for the student, but also for the teacher. So just as a quick preview, the ones we're going to go through are Kahoot!, Many people are familiar with that. That's a group game or a team game. Uh, Clickers is kind of a hybrid. It's something that um, teachers can do with only one device, really. Everything else is done with paper. Quiz is, and we will talk more about that. That's sort of like a Kahoot that kids individually can work on asynchronously at, on their own time. And Quizlet Live, which is relatively new, but that's a, a group and team game. And so when we go through the rest of this, and, and I'll throw a little bonus out there, the free bingo cards, there's a few others that we'll talk about. But as we go through this, the most important part about it is, get back to the slide. is that we're doing activities that create interesting challenges and create that self-evident assessment and natural reflection. So thank you for joining me in this course and uh, move on to the next module and we'll learn more.